climate change and as the savannas increase and our primate ancestors came out of the, out of the forest canopies, they're, they're tracking across the savannah. And if you're a hunter, what do you look? You look for footsteps and you look for Scott. Over a period of like two million years, the human brain doubles. It coincides with these rainforests receding in the grasslands. And then they're looking for different things to eat and they flip over cow patties and find like bugs oh, yeah, and shit yeah. to eat. The mushrooms too, they tried them. Right. And when they ate them, they realized it makes them see better. It helps cultivate language, interacts with the brain, perfectly aligned with something that would make the brain grow. And psilocybin substitutes the serotonin, becomes a better tr neurotransmitter, activates neurogenesis. It causes new neurons to form, new pathways of knowledge. So that's the stone date hypothesis. And it speaks to a mystery that the human brain, basically the brain cavity doubled in size. You didn't have a weapon. How hard is it for a person to kill something with your hands? What are you even going to get? What are you going to catch? What the fuck can you catch with your hands? Well, you can't catch a squirrel. You'd be just your hands, no tools. You'd be hunting and gathering mostly. But, I mean, you, I mean gathering, I would say. Yeah, you'd be eating shit that you found on the ground. Yeah. That's primarily what you would eat. And then once in a while you'd get something an animal. But but well, yeah, but then they had, yeah, you're right. Uh they obviously <laughs> had to figure out different ways of getting animals. Well, it's one of the shifts that they think took place that allowed the, the human brain size to double over a period of 2 million years. Oh, really? Human brain size, apparently, um, I was listening to a Terrence McKenna lecture on this once, and he was talking about all the uh, human brain size d doubled over the period of 2 million years. It's one of the biggest mysteries in the fossil record. And his idea was that they had discovered mushrooms and that the uh, chimps mm. over this period of time or the monkey people, whatever the fuck they were, yeah. ancient hominids, yeah. had discovered uh, m mushrooms after the climate had shifted. And he backed it up. He did back it up. At least he's dead now. He backed it up with um, some d climate data that we know from you know core samples and stuff like that yeah he thinks that they experienced climate change where the rainforest had receded in the grasslands and that this gave birth to the rise of ungulates like cows and you know deer and things like that yeah and they would shit these mushrooms would grow on their uh shit and then they've observed a lot of these monkeys in the wild picking up cow patties and looking for grubs and beetles underneath it. Oh, I see. And they think they might have experimented with the mushrooms. And that if they experimented with psilocybin mushrooms, a lot of things could take place once they realized that it was not just a viable food source, but also provided them with a bunch of different benefits. One being their vision and increases mm. visual acuity. I know. It's yeah. so weird. Especially it's in low true. doses. Yeah. Ah, so, so it would make them see things better. Two, it makes them hornier, makes them more communal, and it makes them more creative. And all those things possibly could have given birth to the to to language and to a lot of other things they also think it's possible that that creativity could have enabled them to start hunting that they started using tools and you and thinking and and, and trying to figure out ways around stuff and trying mm -hmm. to you know try to figure out how to make a, an effective weapon to kill something at a distance like the more they're thinking and becoming creative the more that, that stuff's enhancing them and this this period of two million years is like a pr pretty profound jump for the human brain size. They think some of that also came to do with our desire to kill things with, with weapons. But wow. once we started hunting and eating meat, we got way more protein, more bioavailable protein. It was healthier for the animal, for the human animal. And then we also started to try to figure out other better ways to kill these animals, which made us even more creative and competitive. Yeah, yeah. And they think that all, yeah. these, these, all these factors might have taken place that turned us into a person. That's pretty amazing. Two million years. Yeah, it's just like a deviation. Well, you know what's even crazier? Like, 65 million years ago, we were like a mole. Oh, yeah. People were like a little shrew. That's yeah, our, that's our right. ancestors. That's right. I remember that. What's the name of that thing? I don't know, man. I think it's Some... the Fnorf Gorifrithus. What is I think you're right. Pisc Say it again. Uh, One more time, please. I'm going to write this down. Crispus. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a weird little mole thing. Crispus Crispus. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, it's um, a little tiny rodent. Yeah, because I, I did a podcast. Oh, the no, stoned I... ape theory. No, sorry, not McKenna. It was a uh, he was uh, an ethnobotanist. And he was also a psychedelic adventurer, and he had a theory. And the theory was that the what you're talking about this ch climate change uh, that also coincided with the doubling of the human brain size. 
his theory was that one of the things that was in play was that these apes would experiment with different food sources as they moved into the grasslands. And there was a lot of undulates in mm -hmm. these grasslands. And that psilocybin mushrooms, which we know existed back then, would grow in these grasslands. And that these monkeys, these apes rather, started consuming psilocybin mushrooms and it led them to be more creative. And it also led to specific traits like the development of language. That eating mushrooms um, in low doses increases visual acuity, which would lead them to be better hunters or more perceptive. It also leads them to be hornier, which would uh, most likely involve more breeding, more sexual activity, and possibly select the, the ones that chose the, the mushrooms would maybe possibly breed more than the ones that didn't choose the mushrooms because they were more into it, they were more social, more uh, sexually active. And he has a, a series of, uh, like, the, his brother Dennis, who's still alive, detailed it on a podcast we did, the very first podcast we did. In, his brother is, an, is, is an actual scientist and detailed it in terms of how psilocybin affects the brain and what areas of the brain it, it what 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 actually takes place when you're under the influence of this and that it could very potentially have led to the development of language and that this all these things in play the throwing arm the uh, you know developing these new social networks uh, where you, you need to communicate with each other along with the harnessing of fire along with the consumption right. of psychedelic mushrooms right. on a regular basis because they were incredibly frequent and very edible. All right, that's total trip. I've never heard of that Fascinating. before. Fascinating. Yeah, it would be really, like, that's a really good example of some random thing. If it really did play that role, how random that is that these freaking things happen to be growing there and that they happen to be attracted mm -hmm. to them and ate them. We know that animals like to get high. Um, yes. Elephants will eat these fruit that have, well, the drunk in this case, that have yeah. over-ripened and have um, become alcoholic. We know that animals will do that. You've seen jaguars that consume psychedelic plants and they no. lie on their back and stare at the sky. You've never seen that? <laughs> no. Oh, it's amazing. Well, you, do you know what ayahuasca is? No. Ayahuasca is a, it's a way that uh, these people in the rainforest developed untold thousands of years ago of developing an orally active version of dimethyltryptamine. Do you know what dimethyltryptamine no, is? No, I'm not no. in this. Okay. Yeah. Dimethyltryptamine is the most potent psychedelic known to man. It's an incredibly potent drug that is just in intensely hallucinatory, gives you these insane visions, and it also is pretty, this, here's, here's a jaguar. It's really crazy. And this is in the Amazon. These jaguars eat these plants, and these plants uh, are, they, they have the ingredients of ayahuasca, and these jaguars are known to eat these things and then trip their fucking balls off. Yeah. They eat them and their pupils dilate and they roll over on their back and stare at the sky. I mean, they're clearly high. Right. So this is something that oh, you're going to say. Something. Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. So this is what, what ayahuasca is, is dimethyltryptamine. Like, look, it's kind of cool yeah. watching this jaguar f trip balls. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they just stare. They see shit that's not there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or it is there. Maybe they're astral this. traveling. It's amazing. So what ayahuasca is, is w there's dimethyltryptamine, which is this incredibly potent psychedelic drug, is produced in the human body. It's produced by the liver. It's produced by the lungs. And they also believe it's produced by the pineal gland, which is literally your third eye. The pineal gland in certain reptiles actually has a, rep a retina and a lens. I mean, it's like an eyeball. And they think, and the, the Egyptians called it the seed of the soul, and they think that this is one of the reasons why they have this obsession with this uh, gland in Eastern mysticism. Is somehow or another they figured out that this is the gland that produces this incredibly potent psychedelic drug. This psychedelic drug, dimethyltryptamine, also exists in thousands of different plants. The problem is when you consume it orally, your body produces something in your gut called monoamine oxidase, and monoamine oxidase breaks it down. So what these indigenous people figured out is how to combine one plant, which contains this psychedelic compound, with another plant, which contains a natural MAO inhibitor called harmine. So they brew this all together, much like they did to the cassava, which right, we have right. no, under, no idea how they figured that out. Right. They brew this stuff up together, and they create this psychedelic tea called ayahuasca. And ayahuasca now, they have all these trips where people go down to Peru and take this stuff and trip their fucking balls off. 
and this uh, this the combination of these things um, leads to this incredibly potent trans really transformative experience which is impossible to describe and that this this uh, psychedelic drug why, why did I bring that up what was well, we we're talking about how maybe chimps and are these early ancestors did something similar which Push them along this path of starting to communicate. Right, but how with did I get other. to DMT? What, what did I, what, how did I get to ayahuasca? There are a couple of links in that chain. Maybe it was because of animals that get high. That's that, that's what it was. So this is what this. Th that's exactly what it was. It was the yeah, the jaguar getting high on DMT. That's what they think the jaguar is doing. It's the, the jaguar consuming this stuff. He's, it's making him trip on DMT. And right. DMT is. I mean, it's fun. It's a really exciting right. and experience. So, the, so Robert Trivers is this wonderful biologist who started a lot of the kinds of work that we're talking about going in the 70s, calls these sorts of things a phenotypic indulgence, right? Mm. So evolution gave you these pleasure centers in your brain so that you do what's in your genes' best interests and kill the animal or get the girl or whatever, and that makes you feel good. And so we tend to like the things that are good for us and dislike the things that are bad for us. We don't want to eat feces. We do want to eat a steak. Right. So... There's cases like this where it short circuits that. It goes right to the pleasure center, even though what it's doing is kind of irrelevant. But this is a case where maybe it wasn't irrelevant. Maybe it actually caused these animals to then change the way that they behave to become more sociable. Right? It's very possible something like that played a role along the way. 